In this chapter, we will learn how to use a gradient texture to simulate the color of the atmosphere and density. We will also learn how to use volumetric shadows. The shadow will be a static, so that we can bake a large shadow map with good quality. This time, we introduce a fog volume camera script for the first time. We will improve performance by decreasing the render target size. And now, let's begin the show! We create a new volume by clicking in Create Other Fog Volume. Our transparent water plane has its order altered already to be drawn before the fog. Let's activate gradient. A gradient is a texture, and it can have alpha channel for transparency. The fog is now based in this gradient. We can use any texture. In this case, we are going to use a gradient that goes from white to bright blue. In most situations, we prefer to use the blend mode pre-multiplied, because the traditional alpha blend darkens the color when the pixel becomes less opaque. The opacity for textured volumes is handled with a slider intensity in the renderer tab. With the slider optimization factor, we increase the distance between samples at far distances. On this way, the render loop reaches the end of the volume without increasing the iteration count. We will have to spend some time adjusting the values to find the optimal point between quality and cost. We will get back to this later. Now, let's do less boring things. Let's play a little bit with the ambient and incident light. With ambient set to black, it will be easier to adjust in scattering. The mountain is not occluding the sun. We need something else here. Let's do volumetric shadows. Select the light used by the volume and add the script Fog Volume Directional Light. We are prompted to assign the target volume. Next, we select the layer where we have the objects that will cast shadows. Let's check the result by clicking View Depth Map under the tab The Book Options. Let's check it in the scene. Here they are, but the resolution is very low. By default, the shadow map covers the whole volume. In this case, we want shadows only in the island, so we can ignore the rest. To do so, we switch scale mode to manual. Then, we can adjust the zoom slider. Now, it's perfect. We can see these peaks in the rendering profiler. These are the shadow updates. We can adjust how many frames to skip between each shooting. But in this case, we are not going to use dynamic shadows. 
we will compute it just once. Let's take advantage of this and improve the shadow quality. Now let's switch the update mode to on start. Like we see in the profiler, there are no more peaks. Now the cost of the shadow depends only on its size and loop iterations. Volumetric shadows would only affect the light coming from the light source, not the ambient. Sadly, we have to spend some more time with the boring part. We have to adjust the loop parameters to find a good balance between quality and cost. You must do this in play mode to get feedback from the GPU profiler and FPS counter. Now that we are at a good speed, it looks really cool, but we can still improve performance a lot more, but at the cost of losing sound quality. Now, let's learn how to use the camera script to increase performance. We will render the fog at lower resolution. When it's enabled, we notice that the fog becomes a little bit darker. This is because of the blend mode. The correct mode will be pre-multiplied. With a downscale of 3, performance has increased significantly. With higher values, we start to see artifacts at the edges. We can minimize this using Edge Aware Upscale. There are different methods to choose. Adjust the edge detection threshold until the artifacts are minimum. We do these tweaks in play mode to see the FPS counter. Now we copy the settings before stopping and copy them back to the script. We are almost done. Let's have some fun now!